I'm probably best known for my public land hunting. But I do hunt uh, some private. I have a 70 acre farm that my buddy owns that I help manage. It's surrounded on all sides by heavy pressure so it's hard to grow big bucks there. Um, so we do, we do what we can to keep them on the property and to draw them to the property. Dave's farm is not being farmed right now but it's still pretty open where the fields used to be. So we put in a lot of food plots. Um, there's not much timber on the property. It's a lot of tree lines and a couple little blocks. It is a night and day difference the years that we have food plots to the years that we don't. And there's been several years that we didn't put a food plot in because uh, Dave's mom would uh, let somebody else hunt the property for doing some work for her or something and we didn't want to really build it up for that person. So we only put them in on certain years and it is a night and day difference on the years that we have food plots. There's probably 10 to 20 times more deer on the property when we have food plots. Last year she uh, let two guys hunt on the property in exchange for doing her roof. Uh, me and Dave should have did the roof. <laughs> so we didn't put in food plots last year and it was a ghost town. Um, we saw a few deer um, but not a lot. This year we got in five plots and we're seeing the most deer we ever seen on this property. The most does, the most bucks, the most big bucks, all around the most deer we've ever seen on this property. We noticed in the last couple of years that the big buck primary bedding on the back of the property was starting to expand and there's a little brushy area that got really thick and just keeps getting thicker and the bucks have started going in there and using that as primary bedding. And because of that, um, I was looking at an area off to the side, kind of in the corner of the farm where we really don't go that often, as a great place to put in a nice little clover plot. It's down low, it's wet, and it's right up against that bedding. And Dave's farm lays out bad for the wind. Our axis comes from the, from the uh, with the west wind blowing right into the, to the farm. North and south winds are kind of what we play. The west winds suck. But this particular spot, because if you get around to the back side and in there, a north wind or a west wind won't blow anywhere near that bedding. So we went in there during the summer and we cleared out an area. We cut down a bunch of box elder trees that are kind of useless trees anyways and opened up some sunlight to the forest floor right up against the bedding. I was kind of kicking around what the plant down there and I figured clover was the best uh, option because it grows good in a wet low soil and it's easily maintained. You can go down there with a weed whipper and cut it because we really can't get equipment back into there because of the timber and such and it was sinking to low ground. So uh, I called uh, Lance um, from Slayer Seed and had him make me up a blend of uh, like four or five different uh, clovers and threw that in there and uh, then it was just a waiting game. I really wanted to hunt this plot three core times. I wanted to hunt it early season, I wanted to hunt it October, and I wanted to hunt it rut. The reason for that being I wanted to see the different stages of when the deer come in there so we know the timing well for future years. And I really expected it to do well uh, early season. And I expected it to do real well, you know, later on towards rut. And I knew a lot of deer were bedding in that primary bedding area. Um, our best bucks have always come out of that area. That primary bedding on Dave's farm has, in 25 years, probably 90% of the mature bucks we've seen, we've seen come out of that bedding. And now it's expanded, got it bigger, and it's holding more deer and better deer. The plan was to hunt it September, October, November in 30 day increments, you know, give or take a little because you got to get the right winds. Um, you don't want to over hunt plots or they, they just turn into what everybody else has got. You can only go in there four kills if it's going to be a kill plot. You got to be lenient on it. Uh, some guys think that they can put on some scent control, go out there and pound those spots and that's why I'm killing deer on pressured properties and they're not.
Those deer catch on to that. It's Tuesday, September 26th. We finally got a west wind. Dave's sitting in the observation stand. I went to a new stand that we put in this summer. We put in a little plot here, and right where it's right up against bedding. So um, I'll show you what we're looking at. This little uh, clover plot here, Slayer Seed uh, Mixed Clover. We put that in uh, a month and a half ago. And this green stuff down here, they were feeding on really heavy. And they're coming through here up these big heavy trails here to a bean field that you can just barely see there that's only 20 yards away. And I don't know if you can see how thick this is and how thick that is. But this is like the only open area between the thickness. And right in there, on the edge of that high grass, is where the big bucks have been bedding lately. The only problem with uh, this setup is I snuck in along the bean field back here and looped to the tree real quietly. And when I was climbing up here, a deer snorted in there. I think he was bedded right on the edge of the plot watching it. Which sucks. But And I don't know what it was. It just moved off that way. Uh, Dave's kind of over there. Maybe he saw it, but it probably stayed in the swamp. Hopefully it didn't spook everything else. I guess we're going to find out. I'm kind of surprised there ain't no rubs here. But you can see that the stuff's been browsed on quite a bit. But there's no rubbing at all yet. So... The clover don't look too eaten down either. Um, but it's hard to tell from the tree. They should be pounding it. The fact that there was a deer bedded right next to it should tell the story that they're hitting it. We'll see. I had a lot of does come in. More than we've ever seen on this property in 25 years of hunting here in one sit. We quit hunting does on this property about 10 years ago because of the low deer density. It was interesting to see uh, a lot of the does walking right past the clover to eat buckthorn leaves uh, behind me. And I had noticed a lot of that this year and starting last year that buckthorn leaves um, really seem to be a draw for, for deer.
It's October 17th. I hunted this once before this year, about 30 days ago. Right at the start of the season. Uh, they're predicting a west-southwest wind. If we're going to get southwest or south-southwest, there was another spot I was going to hunt where I seen a booner a few days ago. But I can't get in there on a west wind and it was west-southwest. So I go to Dave's farm where south, west-southwest would be blowing that way. And what do we got? We got the south wind I need for the other spot blowing that way. And this is such a close, just off wind, it's unbelievable. I'll show you this. So this is the food plot. The bedding area is right there, right along those trees. And I'm expecting the deer to come in from over here or over there. They might come in right there. And the wind is literally blowing that way. If they step into that food plot, I gotta shoot them quick. Milkweed's, milkweed's blowing right up the guts. They step into that corner. I gotta shoot them the minute they step into it. As soon as they give me a shot.
I knew this was going to be a good hunt when I, I just got up the tree and was pulling my bow up and a couple of bucks chased a doe past into the bedding area. And then as soon as I got the bow up and got the camera ready, a spike came running in from behind me. I didn't get a good look at the first buck, but I body size it looked like a two-year-old. It was definitely bigger than the second one. But I didn't see a huge rack. I heard this one coming for a while. But when that one started grunting and chasing, he came running through. I'm sitting over the food plot. I just got here. That's a good sign, isn't it? When bucks are running around right when you get here. I've sat this before, but uh, I really wanted to hunt it rut because there's a lot of rut sign in this area. And I've pulled a lot of does into that food plot. Dave should, Dave should be having a good time right now because he's on the other end of this where those deer ran. Hopefully they pull something big out of the woodwork. I could hear a lot of grunting and chasing in the, in the bedding area. It was obvious there was a lot of deer in there right now. The doe came running back out of the bedding area past me and I got ready. And buck after buck just kept coming out of there chasing after that doe. Seven bucks in all uh, 
came out following that doe and uh, many of them went right underneath me. They went off over the hill and the sun was starting to set and I really thought this was probably going to be the end of my hunt. I thought I saw all the deer um, because it got quiet after all those deer chased that doe past. Time was running out on the hunt and I was getting ready to come down and I had to take a leak. So I unzipped and I was just getting ready to go and I heard a branch snap from the bedding area. Looked like it was down into the hard area, so I'm pretty sure it's a dead buck. That arrow stuck in him pretty good, though. He went right over the hill. Well, the big buck was trotting, trying to keep up with the doe that had gotten way ahead of him. He ran right underneath my tree stand. He stopped six or seven yards from my tree stand, quarter and away, and I was already a full draw. I watched the arrow go exactly where I was aiming. Because the deer was so close to the stand, the entrance wound was high, and there was no exit wound. It was into the far shoulder. I was having a hard time finding blood. We searched around a bit that night and only found a speck or two near where I hit it. And then not wanting to disturb the blood trail or mess it up, I left for the night and had a sleepless night and came back in the morning. Before I went out to look for the deer in the morning, I checked uh, my video camera and I watched the hunt. I didn't get the shot on film, but what I did do was pan back on the buck as he ran away. And I noticed that I had thought he had gone right over the hill, and that's where we looked for him. But watching the video, you can see him turn and go down the other way. So we focused our search that way, and then we found blood. We found a bed with my arrow laying there, unscrewed, and there was so much blood in that bed, lung blood, that you'd expect that the deer should have been laying there dead. But he wasn't. Ten yards further there was another bloody bed, and this one had fresh blood in it, so we kicked him out of there. Then it was really hard to find blood after he had dried up all night. It was pretty obvious that somehow I had only gotten one lung, and how I perceived that arrow hit being so perfect must have just been in here, not in reality. We ended up uh, 
finding a few more beds, picking up some blood, tracking them all day. We tracked them um, thanks to some help from some of the beasts uh, that came out and uh, helped us from the site. Uh, we ended up kicking up the deer and uh, tracked him across uh, a couple neighboring properties and then he ran into a property where I couldn't gain permission and that was the end of it. It was a very sad and disappointing ending in many levels. Uh, it was sad for the buck. I mean, uh, you don't want to kill him unless you're going to use him. I mean, you, I know that deer's dead but I couldn't retrieve them. And that sucks. That's just the only way to put it. And on another level, uh, I had failed a couple times this year. I, I had a shot hit a limb and deflect, and I had a flat out miss on a big buck. And I had another buck see me in the tree drawing, and I needed that kill for my confidence. I just did. Um, you know, I came from a spell of just killing everything I was shooting at for quite a few years and really getting a little cocky, and this kind of knocked me down uh, to level. Um, I don't know how to say it, but uh, it was a humbling thing. You only get so many opportunities, and when you're hunting pressured whitetails and you're holding out for big whitetails and you're hunting with a bow and you get limited opportunities you need to capitalize on those opportunities when they arise you need to be prepared and you need to finish the job and I didn't do it plain and simple one of the biggest things about a failed hunt if you want to make it right is to learn from what you did wrong and to make attempts to correct your behavior to fix those issues. So let's take a quick look at what went wrong and analyze what I could have done differently or better. The buck was in a hurry making me feel rushed. He came trotting in, uh, trotting past, and uh, I came to full draw expecting I'm gonna have to stop him and you gotta think, you only got seconds, not even seconds, to make a decision. And all of a sudden he stopped and he's quartering away. And in a split hair of a second, I felt I could make that shot. I put the pin on him. I'm already at full draw. And I know he's about to bolt again. And I shot. I felt really confident on that hit. I really did. I thought, that's a dead deer. I drove it down into his heart is what I thought. I think feeling rushed and panicked made me shoot too quick. Um, it was a wrong decision. I should have waited. I should have let the deer move out a little further, then tried to stop it, then took the shot. And if he didn't stop, he didn't stop and let him go. It ain't worth wounding the animal. That one's on me. I shouldn't have took the shot. Well, I hope you learned some things from me sharing this hunt with you. <laughs> I know I did. Uh, thanks for joining me, and hope to see you around the internet or around the woods. Later. Are you going to be fun dragging them out of here? <laughs>